Today was the big day at the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission hearing in Washington as former Fannie Mae executives testified on the role of the company in the financial crisis. Ken Posner is a Morgan Stanley analyst who covered Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac when he led the investment bank's specialty finance sector. He is also the author of Stalking the Black Swan, Research and Decision Making in a World of Extreme Volatility. We're pleased to have him join us now. Welcome to you. Thank you, Laurie. So this is perfect timing with the book and the hearings going on Absolutely. today. First, tell me what inspired you to write the book. You want to see an overall restructuring of Fannie and Freddie, and how should that look like? Or what should that look like? Well, in terms of writing the book, we've all just been through a huge black swan, the housing and capital markets crisis of the last couple of years. But as an analyst, I had seen black swans impacting individual stocks for years. And so the book is about how decision makers can predict and anticipate and react to black swans. Now, in terms of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, I covered those companies as an analyst for many years. And I think it's time that we face up to the fact that they need to be restructured. Their current model doesn't work. Okay, so describe for me then how you want to see that restructuring happening. Mm -hmm. In the break, you gave me a little bit of a hint that perhaps the big banks should take over that role. That's the direction that makes the most sense to me. And, you know, there's three choices, basically. Their business of guaranteeing mortgages and then selling them off to the capital markets. It's a great business. It provides liquidity. It gets people into houses. But the, the current model where public shareholders try to fund a public policy mission, it's become too controversial. It doesn't work. The worst thing we could do is let the government run it, because now you're talking about $7 trillion more debt on the U.S. Uh, government's balance sheet. So to me, the logical you know, strategy is to transfer that functionality to the big banks, make them pay for it, and then let them provide the liquidity that Fannie and Freddie used to. Do you think the government should have any role at all, then, in the mortgage market? I think the government should have a small role in the mortgage market because, after all, housing is the American dream. And housing is good for communities. But we have to be careful that some amount of subsidy is good, but too much ends up fueling boom and bust. And that's what we want to get away from moving forward. So do you think there's a fix at all for Fannie and Freddie? Um, let me see. Phil Angelides, of course, the FCIC chair, said, uh, pointed out that um, Fannie and Freddie were leveraged 7,200 to 1 versus Wall Street's average 40 to 1. Actually, that was at its peak, the Wall Street mm -hmm. peak. I mean, can you bring that down? Can you make amendments there? Can you increase the capital reserves? I mean, can you fix them at all? Is that something you'd be in favor of? Yeah, I mean, you could certainly make a lot of tweaks and somewhat higher capital standards in hindsight would have been really, really good for these companies. But I think the real problem is that this unique model where you have um, public investors trying to fund a company that's supposed to achieve policy goals, I think it's become too controversial. I don't think you can fix that. I don't think there are any other companies like Fannie and Freddie that you can point to. But it's part just, of the problem was the executives looking to reap big mm -hmm. bonuses, too. So can you work in some of these restrictions, these salary caps that Ken Feinberg's working toward mm -hmm. to make Fannie and Freddie effective? I think, you know, the idea of being smart about compensation is really important, but I don't know that that's going to fix the problems at Fannie and Freddie. I think, again, the problem is there's no other companies out there that have a public policy mission and private funding. It's too controversial. It's too different. That's what weakened the institutions. I don't think it was per se the, the compensation. One of the headlines just crossing, of course, the FCIC hearings underway right now. Uh, Lockhart, one of the former FAO uh, members, says that the Fannie Freddie Mac loss should exceed $126 billion. Does that number come as a surprise to you? Is more than expected? Well, the numbers are big. We knew they, were, they would be big. There's no way for them not to be big because Fannie and Freddie did nothing but mortgages. And in this downturn we've just experienced, there was nowhere else for them to go. But I think the real issue, and one of the things I talk about in the book, is avoiding black swans. We all know that leverage is a source of risk. So I say let's take debt off the U.S. government's balance sheets. If you were to wind down Fannie and Freddie, you could take $3 trillion of U.S practically U.S. debt out of the system. I think that would be really healthy for okay, America. Okay, so in your book, Stalking the Black Swans, what advice do you have for targeting, pinpointing these, the next shoot to drop, if you will? Well, I think there's a couple of things. You know, as we know, some people can predict some black swans some of the time, but it requires research and analysis, and you need to have those resources. That's one of the things I talk about in the book. But when you don't have those resources, you need to be able to be ready to react quickly. And what would those resources be? You need analysts. You need information. What about the Fed and its role? Can it do a better job? You know, the, we're very vocal from the Fed this week hearing about asset bubbles and, and Bernanke himself saying we do, you know, need to figure out a way to, to, to better predict those. Well, I think giving the Fed some more resources, maybe the Systemic Risk Council would be helpful. Maybe a few more analysts studying possible sources of future risk. I think that could be really good. But I don't think we should count on regulators saving us from black swans because we're never going to give them enough power 
to stop a boom in its tracks. Okay. Ken Posner, the author of Stalking the Black Swan. Thanks so much for talking. Laura, Danny thank, Freddy. Thank you. Pleasure.